So this particular Torah portion, reading and feeding, is Miket, um, Miket, or Bechwala Bamarinya. And if you refer to where's the where's our Torah portion, uh, reading and feeding, uh, the Beret Shit book right here. Here we go. Um, this particular. So we're gonna we're gonna move forward into this week's uh, Torah portion, reading and feeding, which is Miket. Now Miket, the summary is is Pharaoh's dream is Joseph the provider is Joseph's brother's journey to Egypt and the brother's return to Egypt. But before I went into, in other words, returning now to record this particular portion, this particular portion for this uh, sabbatical, which actually links, which actually links with, um, it actually links with uh, the Hanukkah, we're in the Hanukkah. We're in the Hanukkah season presently, and as you know, if you either go to the wiki page or if you have our compilation here, you would know that Miket, the Hebrew, means at the end. At the end. So what is this about? At the end. The Chalam means and after. The Chala. Chala is the backward part, or and after, and afterwards. Miket at the end, and um, this portion is generally read on the Sabbath or the Shabbat of Hanukkah. Now we're moving into like the third, the fourth day of the Hanukkah season, and in the Hanukkah video, getting into the etymology of the Hebraic word, we get to find that Hanukkah at its root has to do with initiation has to do with an initiation, almost like a beginning, a starting, as well as a training. And then it also is connected with the light, the burhan, in the sense of illumination. Now, His Majesty's printing press, originally in Ethiopia, was known as the Burhanana Salam, the Burhanana Salam, or the light and peace. And make a note of that because it's going to connect, hopefully, with this particular theme and subject matter. Now, the number seven is connected also with this particular sabbatical portion reading and feeding, and it's also somewhat reflected in the Hanukkah. In other words, the oil that was enough for one day lasting for, um, lasting for eight days. Um, Pato Bantan, I don't know if you know about the reggae singer Pato Bantan. In one of his songs, um, Ja, give me a little oil in my lamp, keep it burning. You know, Ja, give me a little oil in my lamp. In my lamp. That's a, that's actually a perfect song for us in the Rastafari Ethiopian Hebrew consciousness. Is that particular song by um, the English uh, reggae DJ Pato Bantan? Ja, give me a little oil in my lamp. Keep it burning, 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 burning. In other words, he give me a little oil. And then we also have the the five wise and the five foolish virgin and the symbol of oil. So the symbol of oil is connected from the Hanukkah perspective to this particular season. And the seven and eight, the seven and eight link numerology numbers also being reflective as well. Now we as Rastafari speak about the two sevens clashing. Now these are all some of the, what one would call the bullet points or the main points. So the disciples, Dek Amezamorit, take notes of this. Um, the two sevens clashing, now His Majesty's hands, the hands of His Majesty, which are more properly called um, the hands or the sign of practicus, the sign of practicus. Um, or we call it the two sevens clashing, the two sevens clashing. Now, in this particular Torah portion, reading and feeding, that we will call this week for the 10th, we're going to continue with the 10th here, we're going to call it uh, the myth, the Miket. Now, Miket means at the end, right? At the end. And it's linked with uh, Bechwala or Bechwala at the end. This is this week's, um, the 10th portion. Now, this concerns um, Joseph, Yosef. Now, we're, we're into Ayusef, Yosef. 
with Joseph and Pharaoh. And the first portion of this reading and feeding in uh, chapter 41 from verse 1 to chapter 44, verse 17, concerns Pharaoh's dream. Now, we said to ourselves, when we came across just the word dream, we thought to ourselves, wow, how interesting is this? Because um, some of you all might have seen some of the clips from the upcoming uh, vid that we're seeking to, that we're putting together concerning um, MLK um, lying dreams or the newer title updating based on the UV Farty song, um, Dream a Lie, the particular song, Dream a Lie. So we have Pharaoh. Let's put Pharaoh right here. What should we put Pharaoh? Let's put Pharaoh right here. Uh, right? Pharaoh. Is, it, is, is that how it is right there, or is it the other way? O-A-A-O. -A -A -O. Okay, Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's dream. Right? And then we're doing a video presently updating on some earlier teachings that we were formerly um, dealing with um, is MLK, Martin Luther King, right? Martin Luther King's, uh, quote, let's say, dream. So we have Martin Luther King's dream. Now, is it Pharaoh's dream versus Dr. King's dream? Or is actually Dr. King's dream Pharaoh's dream. Think about it for a moment. Think about it very carefully. Now we're gonna we're gonna erase this so we can have more room, so we can actually have more room to get into a little more detail for this lecture right here. So let's um, clear this off for a moment so we can use this use the space that we have here. So Pharaoh's dream. This portion, this Torah portion reading, is on Pharaoh. You understand uh, Pharaoh's dream equals MLK's dream. Now, when you see our new production, our new video, um, Dream Alive, perhaps I'll bring it more front and center. Or you could look for the CNN. CNN, uh, some big criminal news network, but CNN did a program called MLK Words That Change the Nation. And you really need to check it out and pay attention to the details in it. This is what our video, Dream a Lie, our lecture and the video that we're working on currently is actually exploring. Was Dr. King's dream really his dream or was it actually someone else's dream? When we talk about the American, the next kind of dream we can talk about is the so-called American uh, well, we put the K there, but the American dream. So we have the American dream. Now remember, in the story, in this Parsha, in this Torah portion, reading and feeding by Marinya, the Khualam, the Ibrahist in the Hebrew, uh, uh, Miketz, it addresses Pharaoh having a dream. Pharaoh had a dream. He couldn't understand, no, he couldn't understand what his what his dream was about. Now the dream was about seven cows, right, seven, seven fat cows, right, and seven lean cows. Now, we learned that these cows are symbolic for years, but please pay attention to the number seven. So we have a couple of overlapping themes. There's some themes that keep coming out at us if we're paying attention. Even a little bit minimal consciousness will pick up on this. Pharaoh has a dream, right? Martin Luther King had a dream. And where did the king go? Where was the march? Where was that march? That march was down in where? D.C. Now, the District of Columbia, D.C., is basically built on Egypt. We can say um, the District of Columbia was a spiritual Egypt. In other words, D.C. is a spiritual Egypt. It has the uncircumcised um, obelisk, so forth and so on, and it's basically in Egypt. So the people, instead of coming out of Egypt, instead of the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, the so-called Negroes, black folks, the Jacobites, who don't want to admit that they're Israelites, instead of them coming out of Egypt, they go down to Egypt. Remember Isaiah 
the prophet Isaiah says, woe to those who go down to Egypt. And it's interesting how that actually connects very intimately with what occurred back in the 1960s. So then we also have the popular refrain over here of the American dream. What's the American dream all about? Well, King, in the video, um, Dr. King's papers, one of his particular papers, they show how he had X out a paragraph. And in our video, we went through that particular paragraph that he had x out, like reading over it, like, you know, usually they show you some TV, and this is this, and they'll pan through, but now we have video, you can pause it, and if it's clear enough image, you can actually read what it says, and it was one of these kind of, um, you know, yada, 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 America for everybody, uh, happy, happy, joy, joy, everybody has a piece of the pie, the cake, so forth, and so on, but what, the, what, we were happy that King crossed it out. The reasons why are kind of debatable, but basically it's the same old nonsense where they want us to forget our experience, but yet we will watch movies and theater and songs and read books which talk about other peoples and their sufferings, what they went through. But if we as so-called black folks, so-called Negroes in the Americas and the Caribbean, if we would dare talk about you know, slavery or our experience from then to now, people say, shh, don't talk about that. That's controversial. That may stir up um, animosities and, and hard feelings. So we have to actually suppress or repress that part of our black story. You see, now, that's the heart. That particular part of our black experience in the Americas and the Caribbean it's the heart and it's the proof of who we are as black Hebrews, black Jews, Ethiopian Hebrews, and Israelites, as the true house of Israel, the Beit Israel. So King's dream is connected with um, Egypt. And we can say that the American dream basically is Egypt. But what kind of Egypt? It is a spiritual Egypt. It's not actual Egypt. We know that. You understand? But even how they built it on the river, on, on the banks of the Potomac, so forth and so on, it's all Egyptian. Even there's, a, there's other videos that, that talk about how Egypt was aligned with certain stars at certain I mean, how, how D.C. is aligned like Egypt with certain stars and constellations and their Freemasons. They built it with this particular thought in mind of creating a... Egypt for the U.S. of of A for America. So the American dream is a type of Egypt. Are you seeing the connection between Pharaoh's dream? So Pharaoh had a dream. But what about Joseph? The first thing one would, would say, honestly, is, well, are you saying that MLK, Martin Luther King Jr., was Joseph? Nope. We're not saying that he was Joseph. He was a king, yes, and Pharaoh was a king. So actually, Pharaoh's dream is King's dream or MLK's dream. Now, even MLK is interesting when we get into milk. You know what I'm saying? What is milk? You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about just milk, but talking about milk from the, from the Ethiopic or the Gutters, because he becomes a type of an image, too, if you understand milk. You understand? Or even a Melok. He's a certain angel. He became a messenger for a particular um, dream as well, but then we also can look at the Hebrew flip of um, Melech and have Molech, Molech, and Molech became a false god when, when, when compared to or put within the context of the true god, Molech became a false god as well. Now, it's, you know, and they burn Kir, so forth and so on. So now we're not saying this was King's original intention. But we're saying this is how the manifestation has come down to us 40 years later. The next significant thing that we want to mention and before we um, move forward is that this is the 50th. If you know, we as Hebrews and Jews, we have a thing about numbers. There's a thing we have for numbers. Scripturally, there's certain numbers. We know that numerology itself, too, has a scientific mathematical um, significance. 
all the bankers that control your money, your futures, your savings, your earnings, they understand that numbers are significant. Although they would tell you, oh, that's superstitious. Oh, there's nothing to it, so forth and so on. Don't think about that. The bankers and the people who control your destiny economically, financially, and perhaps otherwise, they understand how significant numbers are. Now, from a Hebrew perspective, being rooted and grounded in Torah truth and, 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 the, and the foundation, what Christ calls, what the Moshiach, Yehoshua calls the scripture. Remember, he spent additional time opening up their understanding to the scriptures, to the, to the law of Moses and to the Psalms. And, and the prophets, and when we are studying from that perspective, even in Torah, the first thing we come across is things like numbers. We have seven, and different numbers have different significances. And in fact, there's a couple of um, summary charts that certain Bible um, studies and, and ha include, and we want to actually, now that we're thinking about it, have that on our website as well, where you can understand from a biblical perspective the strength, the power, the propensities of certain numbers, and they have certain resonances. So when we take it from the scriptures, from the so-called dead letter, into the liberty of our living life, we can then see resonances, which are principles that are rooted, rooted and grounded in creation, both on this earth, below the earth, above, in the heavens, is, is, these are universal to these numbers. They are universal laws, universal spiritual mechanics. And seven is one of them. We know throughout Revelation, the number seven appears in many different ways, many different times. But now this has also an economic significance, understanding when and where we're at. We're in 2011. We should all understand we're in a recession. That's what they call a recession now in 2011. Are we in the seven fat years, the seven fat cows, or the seven lean cows? What do you think? Some people say, oh, it's tough out there. We just saw a clip on TV, um, you all probably saw it too, where um, some black folks, um, lost sheep, are rushing into a store to buy some Air Jordans for $180. Yes, we've done crazy stuff like that too, but thanks to Almighty, in the name of Yeshua, we've come to a certain level of consciousness, and I hope that these people, these lost sheep, can do the same thing before it's too late. But 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 who knows? We watch and we pray. But they're rushing in there to buy these sneakers at $180 before taxes, after taxes, you know, is over 200 and we know that it isn't walking for exact money. So when people say people don't have money, so the bankers understand this, and this is where the kind of dovetail, there's wealth cycles that are connected with these numbers as well. There are wealth cycles. So these are just some of the elementals looking at the biblical, the scriptural story, and now projecting it in the future or the present reality, present reality, future ad infinitum. You see, so when you hear the economic folks talking about the future of America 20 years down the line, that's how they're looking at their life, looking out for their children, so forth and so on, while most niggers or lost sheep are just trying to so-called make it every day. You know, it's like that song on that thing from Saturday Night Live where they say, lowered expectations. So if you're, t if you're tired of the lowered expectations, and seek to be born again, repent, think differently. You know what I'm saying? The Torah portion, readings and feedings, remembering the Sabbath, keeping it holy and studying with I and I and studying the Torah, studying the scripture and finding the truth for yourself as the Messiah, Yehoshua, our black Lord and Savior, has told us even from the Gospels is what it's really all about. So this is to cover some of the basics about it. Then we'll try to follow up on the different the different lines of um, the different lines of possible um, or projected interpretation. Now, this is uh, what we've talked about the Mesmura Dawi, and this year, 2011, has been all thanks and praise to the King of Kings in the name of Jesus Christos. The first year that we've been able to actually publish our own books to begin publication of our own books in the year 2011. 
But what we didn't know about 2011, but did become aware of concerning 2011, is that this is a, a, a jubilee year. In fact, in many of our scripture-related books that we are publishing concerning the Metzaf Kedus of His Majesty, the Emperor's Bible, um, the authorized Amharic, um, with the King's Amharic, the standard and accepted Kabbalah Amharic, we say that this edition has been printed or published in the 50th anniversary or jubilee year of the very first printing and publication of the Emperor's Revised Amharic Bible, the Imperial Authorized Version of the Ethiopian Holy Bible, published originally on the 23rd of July, 1961. And that's that portion right there. So we're in a jubilee year. And that's also part of the sevens right there, the two sevens clashing. Seven times seven is 49. You understand? So the 49th to the 50th is that jubilee year. So we're in a jubilee year, and the jubilee year is when the Almighty has, has opened up the way and, and blessed us in, in heart and mind to be able to publish our, our books, the Lion of Jew Society and I and I, to be able to publicate our books concerning His Majesty's Bible and the teaching of His Majesty and His Christ. So that's another significance, the fact that it's a jubilee year. So we have to look at this 2011 in terms of a jubilee year. That's the seven times seven, the seven clashing. But what I thought was very important to share with you, first, the first point, and we're going to go over this once again, is this Torah portion, the tenth, the tenth Torah portion, the Chalam or Miketz, which means according to the scripture, which means at the end. You get it? At the end. Where are we right now? At the end. Isn't, are we going into 2012? So they call this at the end or the end of one world order and the so-called beginning of a so-called new world order. So Pharaoh's dream is the first point because Pharaoh dreamed that he stood by the river and out came seven fat cattle who fed on fed in the reed grass, according to Genesis forty one one to two. And then seven lean cattle came up out of the river and ate the seven fat cattle. And Pharaoh awoke. So he saw a fat cattle coming out and fed feeding in, in the reed grass of the Nile, the Hopper River. And then seven lean cattle came out after the fat one, and they ate up the fat cattle. And then Pharaoh awoke. Now, let's go through Pharaoh. For for purpose of the modern and the present eschatology, Pharaoh is likened to the king of Egypt. We have, king, we have a king here. Pharaoh would be like the White House, in other words. Not so significant for Obama, but Obama is in Pharaoh's seat. Let's just make that very clear right there. So he's seeking to perpetuate the American dream. Which one came first, Martin Luther King's dream or the American dream? Dr. King's dream was based on what? Well, according to the documentary, it was based on a very blonde-haired, blue-eyed white girl's selfish desire for her own child. But then... What is really new? What is really different with this uh, Anglo-European Gentile world system? In fact, when our ancestors were brought over here, they didn't bring us over here for our benefit. They brought us over here for, for their benefit. So the, this dream for them is a nightmare for others. So Pharaoh's dream and the American dream is one and the same, and King's dream is just the American dream in blackface. Let's just say it like that. Dr. King's dream is the American dream in blackface. And for a scriptural reference, point of reference, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 25, and you'll find what the Lord, what the, what, what, what the true God that King was supposed to be a speaker of his word, considers such dreams in his own view, in his own point of view. So he doesn't like false dreams. That's what we call a lying dream. I know this might upset some some folks out there because they are 
They are addicted to lies, and the truth becomes offensive to them until it gets way, way too late, and then they wonder, how is all this happening? What happened to the so-called American dream? That's all you hear them talking about, what happened to the American dream. Um, the American dream for who? It was never a dream for us or our ancestors. It always was a nightmare. But around the 60s, something changed. Dr. King introduced this bomb. This is like an F-bomb, in other words. And this F-bomb has worked well for the American dream and some Negroes in a limited capacity.